could be from the corner of your eye or right in front of you. The shape is tall and slender. The figure is hard to make out, but you tremble in shock. These next three stories will show you what it's like to discover something not of the ordinary. These are three stories of encounters with the humanoid. When I was around 12 or so, she was a single mom, so it was just her and I for many years. I was, and still am very fortunate, that she puts me first and did her best to make sure I had what I needed. Unfortunately, her work schedule didn't allow for her to be home when I got off of school, so I usually had to take care of myself in the afternoons until she got off. It wasn't too bad. Usually by the time I fixed myself a snack and got through my homework, she was home. I should note that at this time, I was still sleeping with my mom. I initially started out in my own room, but I began having these horrible nightmares. It was the same dream each time. I was sleeping in my room and I could see a figure lurking in the hallway. I'd get up to turn on the light and something would grab my hand and I would instantly wake up. The touch of that hand was the coldest feeling I'd ever experienced. It was so vivid in my mind. I felt incredibly sad, almost like the happiness was draining out of me. I started making excuses about wanting to sleep with her. My mom never made a big fuss about it. We would stay up late reading on a regular basis and I would accidentally fall asleep. I hated that room and avoided going in there at all costs. It got so bad that every morning before school, I would lay out a change of clothes in the living room so I could have them ready when I got home. My mom started to notice the routine and asked why I didn't just simply change in my room. I just made up some stupid excuse and she brushed it off. I kept my bedroom door shut at all times and I would hurry past it if I needed to use the restroom. The dream seemed to stay away once I stayed in my mom's room. It had been so long that I started to forget about them. One night, my mom had already fallen asleep, but I was still nose deep in my latest library book. It was late, definitely past midnight, when I got an eerie feeling. I couldn't place it, but I was instantly uncomfortable. I put my book down and noticed a lump under the covers towards the end of the bed. We had a cat at the time, but I knew it wasn't her because she hated anything on top of her. I stared at the lump and it started to move toward me. I froze. Every fiber in my body was screaming to move, but was paralyzed with fear. I finally mustered a weak mom and nudged her, all while keeping an eye on the lump. Finally, my mom woke up and as soon as she spoke, the covers went completely flat like a balloon whose air had been released. I went into a crying fit and told my mom what happened. She assured me that I was reading too much scary stuff before I went to bed and my eyes had played tricks on me. I convinced myself she was right and went to sleep. One weekend, I had a friend sleep over. My mom made a big deal about preparing my room for my friend and thought that maybe since I wouldn't be alone that it wouldn't be an issue. We did the whole typical sleepover shenanigans, played with each other's hair and gushed over our latest crush, all while listening to the newest NSYNC CD. I started to get anxiety as the bedtime loomed closer. I somehow convinced my friend that it would be better if we made a bed on the floor in my mom's room, because my room got hot or some shit like that. We quietly moved to my mom's room on the floor next to her bed and fell asleep. Sometime in the middle of the night, I woke instantly and sat up straight. I was staring at a lump at the foot of my mom's bed. I suddenly became overwhelmed with the urge to touch it. I lifted the sheet and placed my hand upon the smoothest object I'd ever touched. I instantly felt every happy memory being sucked away from my body. All thoughts, emotions were drained. I felt cold, colder than any weather I'd been through. I became empty, like a shell of a person. 
Nothing was left but numb darkness. It was as if I was under a trance. I somehow was able to pull my hand away and threw myself against the wall. I stared at the lump until I fell asleep. The next morning, I retold what happened to my mom and she broke down in tears. She thought this was all behind us, but clearly it was more than she previously thought. I didn't do much that day. My mom busied herself with the Sunday chores while I stared blankly at the TV. As she stepped out for a bit to do some laundry, she ran into our neighbor. Her name has left me, but I remember her being a caring figure in my life and a wonderful friend to my mother. My mom confided in her about the odd occurrences and her face went grim. Our neighbor was a Native American and was super in tune with the culture and traditions. She explained to my mother that for some time she's been feeling a presence and could not place its origin. My mom asked her to come inside to speak with me. She agreed, but upon stepping up to our door, she retreated. She said the origin was our apartment and the spirit would not allow her to cross the threshold. At this point, my mom was hysterical, as most mothers would be if someone told them an evil being was possessing her and her daughter's home. Our neighbor apologized, but promised she would gather what she could to help us. In the meantime, my mom reached out to my grandmother. Not that things weren't already weird, but things got even weirder. My grandmother immediately told my mom to call my uncle. He had phoned my grandmother earlier that day, asking about me, but didn't say to us why she was concerned. So my grandmother pretty much brushed it off. My mom called my uncle as soon as he answered the phone. He said, I've been waiting on your call. We need to act now. It still gives me the chills to talk about it. We weren't even close with my uncle at all and hadn't talked to him in years. He told us that an evil spirit had possessed our home and he was going to help us get rid of it. He sent us a bottle of oil that was supposedly poured upon where Jesus was laid to rest. I feel if that was a bit of crock of bullshit, but whatever, it made it sound pretty legit. He instructed us to bless all doorways and entryways. This meant every door, closet, and window. He gave us a prayer to repeat and told us to make the sign of the cross over each one. Our neighbor had also given us a dream catcher to place upon the bed frame the night we blessed the house. She made us swear to stay in our bedroom that night and not emerge until morning. My mom and I quickly blessed the house and both passed out of exhaustion. That night was the first night I had slept soundly since we moved in. My mom, however, laid awake the entire night. Whatever we did, pissed off the spirit. She said she held me tight and put her back toward the window as someone or something howled crying the entire night. It was terrifying screams, as if the realization had sunk in and that we had shut the spirit out and it was no longer welcome. She said that night was the longest night of her life. To this day, I have no clue what I experienced. It was a normal Friday evening at first. My dad had gone to sleep at about 10 p.m. and I stayed up till about 11.30. At 11.30, I turned off my TV and went to lay on my bed where I promptly pulled out my phone and began browsing Reddit. This lasted for about 45 minutes before I finally decided to go to sleep. I realized that my throat felt a little dry, so I got up to get some water from the fridge. My room used to be a second living room off the kitchen, so there's no door on the frame, only a thick curtain. As I approached the curtain, everything was normal. It was just a normal night. The only thing that seemed a little off was how quiet it was. There were no crickets chirping outside which was unusual. I could still hear my dad's white noisemaker in his bedroom. I pulled the curtain aside to step out into the kitchen and experienced the single most terrifying thing in my entire life. <laughs> Behind the curtain was what I believed to be a humanoid. It was facing the hallway to my dad's room and it was in a crouched position. We had a nightlight plugged in right above the kitchen countertop, so I assumed it was trying to avoid the light. Its skin color was a sort of dark, gray gunmetal color. As I pulled the curtain all the way back, the humanoid turned his head sharply to look at me. I gasped 
and was immediately overcome by an immense sense of dread and terror. I was quite literally paralyzed by fear. I just stood there with my hand on the curtain, mouth wide open. It stared at me for a couple of seconds and then everything went black. I regained consciousness an hour later and was lying on top of my bed, the cover still made. My heart was pounding and it felt like it was beating a million times a minute. I saw something on my left, which was the darkest part of my room and had a door leading to our carport. Standing over my bed were three dark gray figures. They were tall, their heads nearly touching the seven foot ceilings in my room. I turned my head, stared at them and began to experience the same sense of terror as before. It was the same exact sense of dread and paralysis. I was unable to move, unable to speak, unable to do anything except look. This time, they looked at me for much longer than a couple of seconds. It felt like it lasted a full minute or more. At the end of that minute, the being in the middle leaned in a little bit and moved its hand towards my foot. It tapped its finger on my foot three times, slowly. Each time it tapped, a strange sensation pulsed through my body. It was just a weird energy that I can't really describe. After the third pulse subsided, the being stood straight again, and then everything went black. I regained consciousness, yet again a minute or two later. Still on top of my bed, covers made, and immediately began to cry. I don't mean just a tear or two, I mean that I was quite literally just bawling my eyes out for the next few minutes. Eventually, all that emotion subsided and I grabbed my phone from the bedside table. It was 1.33 a.m. I didn't end up going to sleep at all that night. I just sort of sat there on my bed, trying to explain to myself what had just happened. In the years since this has happened, I've yet to come up with the explanation that doesn't involve aliens, demons, ghosts, or some sort of paranormal phenomena. I was around 12 when this happened to me. During the time, my brother and I shared a room and had bunk beds. He had the top bed while I had the bottom. The room was quite long but really skinny, almost an L shape if you will. Anyways, I remember waking up late one night. At the time, I could not figure out what I was feeling, but now I could describe it as dread and extreme anxiety. I stood up out of the bed and checked to see my brother sleeping. As I turned towards the doorway, I noticed it was open. This was odd because he always slept with the door closed to keep the cat out. As I walked towards the door to shut it, I could see a shadow in the doorway that was illuminated by the hallway nightlight my dad had set up for us. I peeked around the corner and that was when I saw whatever it was I saw. In the doorway was a massive figure, if I had to guess, probably around 6'6 six, six to 6'7, six, extremely lanky. The only detail I can make out was its long skinny arms, its eyes which were red. I remember staring at it for a couple seconds before it entered the room, having to bend at the waist just to get underneath the door frame. The last thing I remember was it rapidly approaching the bunk bed, then everything goes blank. I woke up on the floor early the next morning. I told my dad about it the next day, but of course he chalked it up to a bad dream and realistically he was probably right. It is just difficult to get over the fact that to this day I still remember whatever was in the doorway and the exact feeling I had from start to finish. The final thing about the encounter that convinced me something happened that night was my brother. About two days later, he pulled off his shirt and had what looked like three insect bites on the upper right back, forming a triangle. They went away relatively fast, but to this day, he has a mole in the direct center of where the bites were. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to check me out on Twitter, 